Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson two of the platform specific series of my 8086 uh, programming tutorials. Now, today we're going to be looking at MS DOS again, and we're going to be looking at EGA this time. Look to CGA last time, we're stepping up in the world, we're moving up to the EGA graphics system, which gives us 16 colors and a little bit of a palette. Okay, we're going to learn how to get the graphics onto the screen again, turn on the screen, and we'll be showing our little character. Our called Yokubiko, it's one of the Chibi Aliens characters. So um, the graphics will be a little bit limited because we're still in EGA, but they'll be pretty good. Unfortunately, the EGA mode has some more tricks for us like CGA did, we have to deal with the um, layout a little bit, but we'll get it going. The example we're gonna be looking at today, let's go over to it. The example we're looking at today is this before compiles onto CGA, EGA and VGA with just a few tweaks and even Wonderswan, and Wonderswan color for that matter. So um, effectively what we've got is we've got a screen init module, which will turn on the screen of the respective system. We've got a get screen pause function, which will calculate a memory address in ESDI, which we will be using as the destination for our sprite data. And we've got a get next line function, which will move the screen down a line for the drawing of the graphic. Now, what we also have is we have a palette function called set palette. And that will set the palette entry AL to the value in DX. And I use a common format in my tutorials for this. I use a one nibble per channel in GRB format. So um, that's what we use. That's not what EGA uses. And we'll convert this palette to what EGA actually wants. That's the way I tend to do things in my tutorials, just to keep the multi-platform element of it. Of course, if you are only working on EGA, then you would ignore that and you would probably you want to use your own native format, but we, we're gonna discuss how to set palette entries and that will hopefully help you out. Okay, so let's fire up today's example and let's just check it really works because sometimes they don't. Sometimes there's a bug crept in my code, but it looks like I'm lucky today. So here's our character here and uh, the colors are roughly right. Now the sprite was created with AcroSprite Editor, which is this thing, it's free, open source, so I wrote it in C Sharp, so you can welcome to download it. Here's our character, and to export for today's example, you just go to MS-DOS, save all bitmap EGA, that's this one here, and that will export the file that we're using today in the format that you need. Now we're specifying a start position in BH and BL here. We're specifying a width and a height. The height is 48. The width is just six because it's in bytes and it's in bit planes. EGA works in bit planes. If you're not familiar with a bit plane, a, a, a linear format, if you want to call it that, would mean that the bits for a single pixel were all together. So if you're using four bit per pixel like this, you would have like maybe the top nibble would be the left pixel and the bottom nibble would be the right pixel and that would be color zero to 15. Bit planes work differently. One of the bits that make up the four bits of a pixel are stored in a byte. So the byte contain, would contain all the bit zeros for eight consecutive pixels. And then another byte would contain all the bit ones then all the bit twos and then all the bit threes for the four bits that make up the color. They're split up and so that means our width is actually six. And you can see here that we're actually doing four different writes and we're actually having to select four memory addresses using out commands to select the alternate bit planes. Now the destination address is actually the same in each case. That's why we're doing a move SB which transfers a byte from our source to our destination, but that also increases the destination and we don't actually want that in this case. So we're doing a decrement in three of the cases and just letting it increment once. Now to toggle in the alternate bit planes, we need to do an out. We need to do an out to the address 3C4H, but the value we need to out needs to be 0102 for plane zero, 0202 for plane one, 0402 for plane two, and 0802 for plane three. Now we can actually set a combination of these if we want to write to all the bit planes simultaneously, if we were just using black and white, for example, but in this case, we're not doing that. If we wanted to write to all of them, what we would actually do is do OF02 here. You can actually see an example of that in my print character routine, which is black and white. So by doing that, we're just saving some extra writes there. But in the case of you're doing color, you're gonna to need to do something like this, where you're switching to the alternate banks with outs to 03, C4, depending on the plane you want to select. Okay, so that's how we're actually switching between the bit planes to transfer our bitmap data from our sprite, which was exported with Aqua Sprite Editor, into the screen. Now, we're using the move SB to transfer each of the bytes, and we're also using get next screen line to move down the screen at the end of each line. Now, as well as that, we've got some code here that's going to transfer the palette. We've got our palette definition here in the common format for these tutorials. 
and we're transferring that using the set palette command which will set color selection AL to DX so DX is being read in and AL is our loop counter and it's going from 0 to 15 here let's have a look at the actual code that's doing the work well to turn on our EGA screen we've got a really easy ride of things which is nice all we do is we select AH0 which is the select video mode we're using bias call hexadecimal 10 here and AL we just need to set to 0D which is mode 13 and that's the EGA 320 by 200 mode which we're using for today's example now there's a little bit of a description here which is how we are selecting our bit planes but when we actually want to select the screen position if we've got an XY position in BH and BL it's pretty straightforward for us to select it now the screen base we need to set ES to A000 here in hexadecimal and then the offset in that screen base for the line that we want all we need to do is multiply our y position by 40 and that and then add our x position and that will be the resulting address now each line is effectively 40 bytes wide because the four bit planes are paged in with different out commands they aren't actually present in the individual banks of memory so even though each line actually needs 160 bytes to represent it there's only 40 bytes within the one line of each bank so we're just multiplying by 40 there and when we want to move down a line we're just adding 40 to the current line position and that will move us down a line so what we're doing is we've got our start position here we're just moving down like that by adding 40 each time when we want to select a palette we are using this conversion code here now the actual job of selecting a color is done with interrupt 10 function 10 in AH sub function 0 here and that will set palette entry BL to color BH here so what we're having to do here is we're having to work out the color entry BH here from our entered value of one color per nibble now on EGA we only have six bits that we can pass to this function and to be honest they aren't even all necessarily perfectly represented anyway because the EGA palette is very limited and the, the operating system call seems to be converting them and it is in some cases not coming up quite the color we requested but uh, what we're doing here is we are moving the bits around from the one nibble per channel entry so the top nibble is unused then we've got a green nibble a red nibble and a blue nibble and we are having to move them around into this format just here so we've got six bits two bits for red two bits for green and two bits for blue now rather obscurely the most significant bits are actually at the bottom and the least significant bits are actually at the top now that's not a major problem but it does just explain why we're moving the top bit of the green to this position here and then the second top bit to this position here we're doing all of this with bit shifts we're just taking our source values here and we're just shifting them around and we're moving them or oring them into bh and of course by the end of all of this we've actually shifted all of the bits that we can use from our source definition into our destination so we're effectively converting this into the closest we can make it for the ega function and then that operating system call is actually setting the color for us so that's what's going on there so this is effectively converting the colors for us and once we've done that we will get our character as close as we can to the, the the colors we wanted you can see just here so if I wake up and I suddenly decide I want the background to be a different color let's say I want it to be a um, purple maybe if I change this to a zero FF and I run again well you can see there we go we've now got a purple and if I wanted it to be a kind of gray and maybe if I do 888 here maybe we'll have a gray there we go well I say maybe because of course if we use the wrong bits and run that well those bits will be ignored because they're not being transferred and also in some cases the color may not actually represent what we would hope it would for example if I compile with these settings here the um, the purple is a little bit darker that should be a bright magenta but the, the bright magenta isn't actually represented in the, uh, the capabilities of EGA so even though the, the bits being transferred we might hope would give that setting um, they aren't the EGA palette isn't actually able to do what we asked so we're unfortunately losing that color definition there so anyway that's the basics of EGA hopefully that's made things a bit clearer for you maybe you'll be able to have some fun with EGA now 
If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Firstly, we're going to be going on and we're going to be doing VGA next time. So maybe that will be some interest to you. We'll be able to have much better colors in VGA. And also, if you have enjoyed this, liking and subscribing, uh, the likes help YouTube decide what to recommend to people. So if you like it, then maybe it will recommend my videos to other people who will like them as well. Anyway, whatever you do, though, I wish you all the best with whatever programming or other creative projects you're doing. Um, I hope you enjoy them and I hope you have a lot of success. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.